In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look here at a very active pattern, dealing with storms moving across the nation really, really quickly from west to east. We're going to see a lot of action-packed weather with up and down temperatures. I think we're going to have warm-ups, then cool-downs, then warm-ups, then cool-downs. There is some suggestions that after the 20th, we're going to start to see a more locked in cold pattern in the central and the eastern states. And even beyond that, we're going to talk about today because we have a couple of things happening up in the Arctic that suggest that the polar vortex is about to get disrupted and perhaps send some really intense Arctic blasts into the United States mostly in late November into December, and that could get really, really intense if the models are correct. We're going to talk about that later on in the video. So let's take a look at the current conditions. First things first, and we can see two major factors here, and that's going to be a storm system over the West Coast, which is not the most major in the world. We are seeing showers from Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, uh, even a little bit of Idaho here. Uh, showers kind of all around there. And then we do see some showery activity, both in the form of rainfall and snowfall there for areas of eastern Canada and then into the northeastern United States, as well as a little bit here of the Great Lakes. So as we kind of just take a look at this showery activity, uh, we can see here that there is quite a bit of it happening for areas of Washington and Oregon. As we mentioned, mostly light to moderate. California dealing with some heavier stuff from just south of the kind of San Francisco area northward all the way to that Oregon border and it looks like some heavier stuff is about to come on shore to those areas so it is about to get more intense and then we do have some lighter showers here for Southern California into Southern Nevada, Southern Utah and Northern Arizona uh, where there is some off and on showery activity ongoing. As we kind of look eastward, we do see some more wintry stuff going on here. Mostly rainfall in this kind of southwestern corridor, but as you head further eastward and northward, we do see heavier snowfall for areas of Canada there. Uh, not the most densely populated areas of Canada, though. And as we move further southward, we can see Toronto is dealing with perhaps some mixed precipitation showers Popping up mostly as rainfall here on the radar, but it is very close to being mixed with snowfall, so wouldn't be surprised if that is actually, in fact, some wintry precipitation coming down. Looking into the United States side of things, we see quite a bit of snow showers mixed in, rain showers, snow showers. I would say this is mostly elevation dependent. They're pretty quick moving, but we have showers all over the place. It's as we head further northward towards Watertown, New York, the Adirondacks in New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and then areas of like Montreal up there in Canada, as well as Ottawa, we're seeing a lot of moderate snowfall, maybe even heavy in some spots. I would say mostly in here, where we're getting kind of lake effect enhanced snowfall, probably the heaviest snowfall that's coming down. Uh, so a pretty intense system there over the eastern states and eastern Canada as well. Let's go ahead and move into the model guidance though. And here is your past five days of snowfall. We showed this yesterday, but just in case you missed yesterday's video, I wanted to show this. This is kind of the snowfall that we dealt with with our major Arctic blast that we just got through. And we could see that there was snow showers all over the place, leading to anywhere from a dusting to maybe a couple inches of snowfall. And that's for all the gray and blue areas in there. We can see some higher elevation areas in the Smoky Mountains and overall the kind of Appalachian Mountain Range saw uh, maybe more than just a couple of inches of snowfall moving into the three to six inches, maybe even more for some very high elevation locations, maybe approaching 10 inches or more. And then outside of that, it was mostly the lake effect snowfall, as we could see looking around the Great Lakes, where we can tell there was a few areas that dealt with heavier bands of that lake effect snowfall coming in. And those areas did deal with 10 inches plus in some pretty isolated locations as well. Uh, so pretty intense snowfall for early November. Let's take a look at how the temperatures have been. We're going to look at the two-day temperature anomalies, actually, just to get an idea of our, our really intense cooldown that we dealt with. Again, much like the rest of how the month of November has gone so far, we've seen warmer conditions really, really dominate for the western states. And that has really aided in sending this massive, massive cooldown down into the eastern states and we could see temperatures in the blues for 1 to 10 degrees below normal the greens are 10 to 15 degrees below normal and some of those purplish blues over the southeast are even 15 to 25 degrees below what is typical so very very intense cooldown that we just got through 
Let's take a look at the European model, though, and kind of where we start ourselves out with is very quiet like the current conditions were. But we can tell there is a softer ridge in the west and a softer trough as a result there in the east. But it is soft. This isn't the most intense uh, trough and ridge in the world. We kind of stick that way. We end up seeing a larger storm system kind of dominate the west here later on. This is by Friday, so a couple of days from now, the 14th. Looking at Saturday here on the 15th, we see the ridge kind of rebuilding for the west. A low here over uh, the areas between the Hudson Bay and Great Lakes. And that does develop kind of a drier cold front where this cooler air wants to be pulled down. We'll see if that actually happens or not. But by Sunday, we can tell that it does. So we end up with another kind of milder ridge and trough pattern here. I wouldn't. This one's maybe moderate. This is a little bit more than just mild. We do, interestingly enough, have a very strong nor'easter offshore of New England, 985 millibar low pressure center there, very intense. And actually, the models as of now do trend at more lake effect snowfall happening. So we are not done in that regard. Obviously, we're in November, so you should know that, but we are not done. Uh, there is more even in the near term. This is within five days that is expected to occur. We do see still a lot of precipitation along the west, including heavy snowfall there for the Sierra Nevada mountains especially. Uh, so that could start to pile up for some of those ski resorts out there. Uh, Monday here on the 7th, we do see some cooler air flirting with the west coast. And this could spell warmer air spreading eastward. Again, it is going to be up and down in general, so this wouldn't surprise me one bit. Some general storminess all over the place for kind of the northern plains, upper midwest, northern Rockies area here that we're seeing. By Tuesday here on the 18th, we still see that cooler west coast with more of a ridge here for the central states and kind of extending into the eastern states a bit. We do have a storm system moving through the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic here that does bring some Michigan and Pennsylvania snowfall maybe on the very northern extent of that storm system. Looking forward towards Wednesday here on the 19th, not much is changing, although we do have a major low coming on short of the Pacific Northwest that brings very heavy Cascade Mountain snowfall there. Uh, overall, a lot of showery activity across the middle portion of the nation, as you can see. And it makes sense. We can tell here, if we're looking at these red bars, there is an atmospheric river just being shoved here into the central states. That jet stream is really, really flowing in really strongly. So it makes sense that we would deal with some very moist conditions over the central states. Moving forward towards Thursday, we see a more substantial storm results from this. This is an interesting one. We end up with a warm front, cold front dynamic with this. So this could spell maybe thunderstorms or even severe weather here across the south central states into the deep south for later on next early weekend. We see a snow system here for the Rockies simultaneously. And again, we're still in this kind of trough in the west ridge in the east pattern. Uh, it's after this storm system develops around later on that weekend, 994 here over Wisconsin, really high uh, intensity cold front with a low precipitation warm front out ahead. Kind of the conditions you could expect with this is surging warm air out ahead of things, which would make it milder along the east side of that cold front briefly. But we do see a lot of that cooler Arctic air is actually diving in southward towards that cold front and expanding kind of with it. And we do have warmth building for the southwest. So this is kind of the building blocks for us returning to a colder pattern in the east. And again, this is right around the 23rd, so we're kind of keying in on that after the 20th time frame, as I mentioned at the beginning. This would also be another event where we would be dealing with potential for thunderstorms and severe weather along that cold front boundary, so keep that in mind as well. Moving forward, that does reach towards the eastern seaboard, and then here we go, right around the 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th. This would be a long-term kind of major cooldown here. And clearly we have a pretty decent positive PNA along the west as well. That is going to aid in kind of just steering all of this Arctic air straight into the central and eastern states. And you might be thinking to yourself, maybe, maybe not, but you might be thinking that, hey, there's a lot more Arctic air just around in general for this after the 20th time frame. Why is that? And we're going to dive into that kind of why later on and show you the reason because there's a very clear reason for that. And it actually looks to worsen as we move into December. Let's take a look here at the total precipitation. And what we see is heavier totals along the West Coast, of course. And then there's also a kind of strip from Texas up towards the Midwest and then through the Ohio Valley and into the Northeast. That also deals with pretty he healthy amounts there. 
The South Central and Southeastern states don't deal with quite as much. So looking at the anomalies, again, you get these two drier pockets. But outside of that, pretty decent for the West. And pretty decent for many in these eastern parts as well. Uh, so not too shabby is what I would say. Total snowfall in the European model is a little underwhelming in the east. We do, again, deal with some snow showers and lake effect snowfall happening in these very, very far northern parts. But we don't see a lot of precipitation once that major cool down moves in later on. So that's why there's a pretty big lack of snowfall. Although we're in November, guys, so this isn't like we're dealing with December or January here. This would be kind of mind-blowing if that was what this was. But this is still the fall. It's not super expected to have widespread snowfall or anything. I think we just got a little bit spoiled with this previous system. The mountainous west, though, is taking it to a new level. This is more snowfall than we've seen all season long so far. This is the snowiest look we have seen thus far. Looking at the upcoming temperature pattern, again, this just after this, we're going to kind of dive into the why. But we have cooler air left over for the east. And watch how it kind of just sticks around. This is Friday the 14th. Saturday the 15th is still around for the northeast at least. And it finally looks to move out for Sunday the 16th, but we get another cooldown that moves in. And that lasts for Sunday the 16th, Monday the 17th, Tuesday the 18th, Wednesday the 19th, Thursday the 20th, Friday the 21st. It's really interesting because we have this cooler air along the west, overall warmer air into the east, but this particular area just kind of stays the exception. Watch me play out like the last kind of portion of this you will see that it's mostly cooler in the west mostly warmer in the east for a lot of this like right here but the northeast wants to hold on to that colder air the reason for this and we're not going to dive into it really but you might have heard me refer to the nao north atlantic oscillation we've talked about it before that is going to be in its negative phase and that is going to keep the colder air around a lot longer for this mid-Atlantic and northeast region, even when everywhere else in the east is much warmer. Uh, so that will be an area that kind of deals with a little bit of an exception, perhaps. It's as we move past the 23rd, 24th, 25th, that we see the Arctic air just fully return. There's no denying it's not the warmest pattern in the west, but clearly this is the warmer area, giving us a positive PNA. And we can literally see the pipeline of that Arctic air and where it originates from, which is the Arctic, by the way. Remember, Arctic is not a temperature, it's a place, and we see that coming from that place, and it's blasting down, so that is why this is an Arctic blast. And it is really intense cold air in this instance, uh, right around the Thanksgiving time frame. I believe this 27th is Thanksgiving, so that would be right around that time frame there. So I kind of teased you guys with the why. Let's talk about it. Here is your really, really high up temperatures, 10 millibar temperatures. This is like as high as you can go basically on the models. And this is where we like to see uh, the Arctic pattern. Um, we're going to watch this very closely. Really, when this area is colder, the Arctic, it likes to bottle up the cold. So it kind of keeps that cold contained is kind of how you could view it. I'm talking about the surface results from these high up uh, patterns. So again, on the high up pattern, it looks like it's all over the place, but we can tell the Arctic air is around in here. On the surface, it's kind of bottled up in there like I'm illustrating here. If it were to warm up, what we would deal with is that Arctic air needing to escape. It's warmer in the Arctic. It kind of wants to move away from that, kind of like oil and water. And we would actually see it lowering down into a lot of different areas. Uh, and that is what we're expecting to see as far as a flip here. Typically, you would hear me refer to this as the AO, or Arctic Oscillation. And this gets confusing. In its positive phase, you would think, oh, it's warmer in the Arctic. No, in its positive phase, it's colder in the Arctic, which again, bottles it up and keeps it warmer everywhere else, like the United States, Southern Canada, uh, Europe, a lot of Russia, a lot of Northern Africa, these areas in Asia as well. These areas would be a little bit warmer because that Arctic air is well in the Arctic. Now, in a negative AO, which we're going to move through these dates, we see that warmer air want to center itself over northern Canada, northern Greenland. And so what we see, again, is this Arctic Circle expelling a lot of that Arctic air. It's like oil and water, like I mentioned earlier, and it wants to exit this region. And that is what we're watching for really, really closely for after the 20th time frame. And I want to kind of get an exact date, but it looks to start building maybe the 18th, 19th, 20th, we see it really progressing here. This is the 23rd, and then it just gets worse and worse and worse and more intense. 
Um, but you got to remember with these types of really, really large scale pattern shifts, there's usually a huge delay. Uh, and we're talking like a week or more time before you feel it kind of on the surface, the effects of something like this. So we're watching this closely. And this would be mostly pertaining to early to mid December as far as the impacts we would feel. So here is kind of your 850 millibar temperature anomaly. So this is not as low as the surface, but it is much closer to the surface than those temperatures we were just looking at. And I want to watch what happens as we kind of move through the pattern because we see it warm along the Arctic, similarly to what that really, really high up temperatures did. Uh, and then we start to see a lot more Arctic blasts and I'll kind of point them out, but we have one there over the middle of the Pacific, one there in the Eastern United States that we can see originates straight here from the Arctic through Western Canada and then down into the Eastern States. Pretty classic stuff. We also have some of it moving into Northern and Central Russia. Uh, and then also there is quite a bit here in Northern Africa as well as kind of Eastern Africa there or Western Africa would be, it gets kind of confusing looking at it straight down from the Northern hemisphere like this. We can see a lot of these little Arctic air masses kind of, again, expelling away from the Arctic, which makes sense in compared to back here, we're not seeing quite as intense of uh, these Arctic blasts, and that's indicative by more of them. We see one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. Uh, we see a lot of them here. Typically, that's indicative of faster moving, less intense cooldowns, but we see one, two, three, four, maybe five major areas of this Arctic air. So that slows it down and actually intensifies those Arctic blasts. And this is, again, a little bit before we expect the major impacts from that Arctic oscillation really flipping in the Arctic regions. So this is just the beginning of it. And I expect that this would intensify into early December. And this is a really promising sign. You guys might remember how cold late November into December was last year and then January and February we saw events like this on a couple of occasions and they resulted in very, very cold air in the central and eastern states. Uh, again, a, a week or two after they started to occur, we're going to be watching for similar things to perhaps happen here very, very early on for this new winter that we're moving into. So with all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.